Right, this is about the basics of energy changes and chemical reactions. All chemical reactions involve an energy change. If there was no energy, nothing happens. Energy is what makes things happen. Okay, so all chemical reactions have energy change. Um, however, some reactions release or give out heat. Those are ones that we're used to. For example, we have fire, um, heat packs. Explosions. Sometimes you have mixed too much fine glass at once, we'll know that it sets super quick when it heats up. So those things all give out heat. You can feel the, heat, the, the chemicals heat up once they start reacting and the products change into the chemicals. And this is called an exothermic reaction. That means that the reaction releases heat. Okay. So if we take an example, if we take some barbecue gas and we burn it. Carbon dioxide and water coming out of the flame. That's the gas. We'll call that a liquid for the moment. Gas. Gas. Okay. We've got three of those and four of those. And six, ten, and five of those. Okay. And you can actually measure the amount of heat given out and that quantity is called the heat of reaction. So this is an exothermic reaction because so we're burning something, heat is released. Delta H is minus 562 kilojoules of energy per mole. So that is a symbol for the standard, that little circle in standard heat of reaction and it's a change in the amount of heat contained in the chemicals so it's got the symbol delta in front of it okay and so the other thing is that a endothermic reaction has a negative heat of reaction i say endo exothermic reaction Note that the reaction is in kilojoules per mole of the reaction. So that means if we burn one mole of that, we get that heat released. If we burn five moles of oxygen, we get that amount of heat released. If we only burn one mole of oxygen, we divide that amount of heat given out by five. Okay. We also can draw a reaction. Um, Diagram, what we call an energy diagram. Where we have a section graph of energy on the side axis, time on the bottom. And at the start we have the reactants, which are propane, and oxygen 
And this is a, the amount of energy contained in those chemicals, chemical energy and heat energy. Afterwards, the amount of energy has dropped down. So in these chemicals over here, we have CO2. If I was being even more accurate, I'd probably put in three CO2s and four H2Os, etc. Okay. And this heat of reaction on this diagram is represented by the gap or the difference in the amount of energy contained in those chemicals that they came from the reactants into the product. So delta RH on this diagram is like that. As you know, when you mix oxygen and propane, instantly nothing happens. You need a little bit of energy to get it started, and that is shown on the diagram here by this little energy pump. And that has a special name called activation energy. It has its own So that's exothermic. So I'm going to do it all again very quickly for uh, endothermic reactions. If you need to make notes or bullet points, etc. You can stop the video and put those down in your study notes. Endothermic reactions absorb heat. Have a negative heat of reaction. For example, a lot of heat packs contain ammonium nitrate as a solid, and then when you smack the heat pack, you release some water and uh, the ammonium nitrate dissolves into separate ions, water, aqueous, and ammonium ions, aqueous, and the heat change here, delta R A zero, is negative. Uh, sorry, it's positive. So, yeah, so uh, it means energy is absorbed. And the products contain more energy than you started with, and the temperature drops as energy is absorbed from the surrounding. And the accompanying heat diagram looks like this. We start with some chemicals, and this is solid ammonium nitrate. With not much energy in, and as the reaction proceeds, energy is contained in them and they turn into dissolved up ammonium and nitrate ions. Okay, so our heat of reaction here with delta RH zero is positive. In this case, it equals plus 40. Uh, and in a um, endothermic reaction, that is also the um, activation energy required for that reaction to occur. Right here, in this video, we're looking at more detail in, at heat changes more like discussion and excellence questions about much more detail about why um, endothermic exothermic reactions occur.
And over here, we have a very common conductive process making of ammonia by a thing called the Haber process. When we're talking about energy, we really should see the state that these things are in because state changes involve energy. And so the idea here is that when a reaction occurs, you have two processes that have to happen for these things to turn into those things, for the reactants to turn into products. And that is that some or all of the bonds, in this particular case, all of the bonds and these things have to be broken. And then over here, to make these things, the atoms have to form new bonds. And as you can imagine, when you break things, you need to put energy in. So breaking bonds is an endothermic process. So breaking all these involves putting energy in to smash those bonds. And when the bonds form and these become stable, they give out a lot of energy, okay? And depending on which process involves more energy, reaction. You see here that this process has a positive heat change. It is endothermic, and that means that the energy is given out, so more energy must be given out by these things than was absorbed in breaking up these bonds. Bullshit. It's a positive heat change, which means more energy is absorbed. So actually breaking these bonds involves more energy than is given out by these things. So if you had a factory doing this, of which there are thousands of these around the world, um, you would have to have a source of energy. So apart from having your raw materials and labor and stuff, you'd have to find an area where they have a good energy supply because this is done in thousands of tons. So it takes more energy to break the bonds than is given out when the bonds are made. So overall, uh, it absorbs more energy than it releases, and that makes the reaction endothermic. So the key thing when you're explaining about this is that bond breaking. absorbs energy. Okay, bond breaking absorbs energy. Bond making releases energy. This um, approach, this whole reaction here is endothermic, which means that for every mole of this reaction that occurs, uh, 92 kilojoules of energy uh, more is involved in this process than in this process. The difference in energy absorbed uh, and energy released is positive 92. So this involves 92 kilojoules per mole more.
There we go. So, if the energy and bond breaking is greater than the energy and bond making, then the reaction is endothermic, as is the case in the Haber process. Energy in breaking bonds is less than the energy made or released in bond making, then it will overall release energy. Okay, and that will be exothermic. So, in that reaction, we use up 92 kilojoules per mole more in breaking bonds than we do in making those bonds. Thank you. Goodbye.